Ravioli, an easy step-by-step -step way to produce one of Italy's classic dishes at home. Super simple to make, easier than you think it would be, and it's a great way to jazz up an Italian classic. So sit down and relax, and let me show you the perfect way to make these fun little pasta packages. We on a mission when we in the kitchen, we whipping the dough, yeah. Bros they blowing the battle like it never met it, we been here before, yeah. And it's never basic whenever we make it. Under the influence of intoxicated. Pushing the mug, whipping the pot, cook with a buzz. Give it a shot. Toss me a honey, can use the key and hook in the top. The liquor entice, all of the rice, you cook in a pot, yeah. And this the life, if you ever in the mood for maybe a few drinks. And some bomb ass, bomb ass. Oh. We making bomb ass food. Just one shot won't do. Not tonight, cause if I'm not hungover, then you know it isn't right. Alrighty, so when it comes to ravioli, we gotta make the base filling. Now, the beautiful thing with ravioli is you can get super creative with the fillings that you want for your ravioli. We're gonna do a traditional base, just some mascarpone cheese. Uh, I let this sit out for like an hour or so, just to kind of firm up, it's easier to mix. We're gonna do two mascarpone, two, how many ounces are you? We're gonna do two, hold on, stand by. Okay, we're gonna do two ounce containers, so 16 ounce, total of mascarpone cheese and we're gonna do maybe a cup cup and a half of ricotta cheese there we go and then to that make sure let me clear this up for you we're gonna add a little bit of kosher salt some freshly ground black pepper and then we're gonna start with one egg, possibly two. The egg is just gonna help emulsify and make this as smooth as it can be. So we're gonna mix this together. And this is kind of, well, the major reason why we want it to sit out at room temp. It's just easier to kind of mix together. So we're just gonna mix that all up. At this point, you could probably even add a little bit of parsley to this if you'd like. I'm keeping it really, really simple. But that's one of the beautiful things about the ravioli is that you can get extremely creative with this. We've done, you know, butternut squash ravioli, we've done braised beef ravioli, braised short rib ravioli, we've done sausage and broccoli rabe ravioli. Just, you know, see what you come up with. As long as the mixture is good, firm like this, I think one egg is enough. Use a little more salt. If you're not squeamish about raw egg, give it a try. I don't care about raw egg. So I don't mind tasting it. Give that another go. So the, the filling is done. We're gonna leave that to the side for now. And when it comes to ravioli, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So you can get a cutter. I'm using a juice glass, because I think it's the perfect size. Flour your work surface. The pasta I already made, we've shown on this channel 101 times how to make pasta. We'll link in the video the recipe that we use. Very simple, very easy. So I went ahead and rolled it out. Kind of thin, not too, too thin, but just barely transparent. But, you know, you can see your hand kind of through it. So we're gonna lay it down. We're just gonna cut out. I'm gonna show you the basic shape of ravioli. Nice, even circle, something like that. Get two of those going. I'm gonna show you the first step. So we have our two cutouts. I have it nice and floured so it doesn't stick. Very important. Put a little finger scoop of the filling on one ravioli. Wet your finger with a little bit of water. Kind of trace the edges with the water. It's gonna help bind everything. Just place it over the top and push it down, make, creating a nice seal. Now when that's down like this, grab a fork. And not only is crimping this gonna give it a nice little design, it's also going to help ensure that your ravioli is sealed. Now it's pretty basic. This is a, you know, a fun pasta to make with the kids. It gets the whole family involved. But that's only one shape. There are multiple different kinds of shapes that you can do with ravioli. We're going to show you a quick easy one as well. So another basic shape you could do is a square. Cut out one square. And then what I like to do is I'll put that on top of the pasta so I know the squares are even. Cut that out. Same kind of style. You're gonna take a little finger scoop 
of your filling, place it down, and then wet the edges. Place it on top and just kind of push it in. Again, the crimping is going to help give it a look and also ensure sealage. There we go. This is the more traditional ravioli that you would see in restaurants. A couple other things you can do in agnolotti, which is a smaller, kind of half shaped, half moon shaped ravioli. Again, you're going to wet the edges and you're just going to bring it forward like that, push her down, and then at that point you would have an agnolotti. And one other one we're gonna do is more akin to, not so much a ravioli, but a tortolini, but this would also work. You would take, get a round cutter, get a little finger scoop of the ricotta, make sure that we got, dip your finger, wet, wet, fold it over, at this point, you would then bring in the edges, like so, and then push that down. This is called a cappello, which in Italian would be a hat. But we in America would call them tortolini. So there's definitely a lot of creative shapes you can do. There's even more than just these. These are the ones that I know. Um, you can also do, let's do one more just for the sake of it. Get a round piece, a little finger scoop little water and you can do a sacchettini. Pull all the edges up like so to make it look like a little pocket purse. And that would be a sacchettini. So I think for the sake of our video, we're gonna do the fun circle shape. And we're gonna fill these all up and we're gonna make a nice brown butter sauce to go with these. So just give me a moment while I kind of just do this off camera because it's a little tedious. We'll be back. So now that our ravioli are prepped, ready to go, we've got a nice crimp on them, they're nicely filled. We're gonna start working on a really simple kind of butter, sage, and pine nut sauce. I kind of want to showcase the ravioli. I don't want to do too complicated of a sauce. But if you're gonna make ravioli, get creative with it. You could do like a traditional tomato sauce. You could do a butternut squash sauce. Anything really you want. That's the kind of beauty of ravioli is that they're creative. You could do whatever you want. So anyway, so what we're gonna do to start this sauce is we got a pan on, on moderate heat. We're gonna add some pine nuts just to toast them. Uh, toasting is optional, but it kind of brings out a lot of the flavor of it and toasted is always better. So we're gonna let that go until you can start smelling the aroma of it. But on this pan, we're gonna do medium heat and we have some compound butter that we have left over here. So in this compound butter, we added a bit of sage, rosemary, thyme. And I think those are gonna be fantastic flavors to kind of match with the uh, pine nuts there. So we're gonna give this a second. We're gonna let this melt down while we get our water boiling for the ravioli. And everything's gonna kind of happen pretty quick. Once these are ready, it's gonna go right in the sauce. Once the ravioli are just cooked, right into the sauce as well. So we're just gonna take a minute here and just kind of let this come and emulsify on its own. Our butter is melted down, it's foaming. We wanna let this keep foaming until it browns but we're at a good point where the pine nuts are nice and toasted. So we're gonna add that to our base sauce here. We got our water boiling. So let's kind of let that zhuzh up. We're gonna add our ravioli. I'm thinking we're gonna do maybe four or five. These don't take long to cook because it is homemade pasta. I'm gonna say maybe three to four minutes. We're gonna let those go in. A nice rule of thumb that I like to imagine when I'm cooking ravioli is I kind of wait for them to float. Once they floated up, I think that they're just about ready. So we're gonna let those cook down. We're gonna let the sauce brown. Cause we want that nice toasty brown color, which it is starting to do quite nicely actually. If you find yourself that you didn't do your timing correctly, that the sauce is browning faster than the ravioli are cooking, you can just turn it off. It's not a big deal. So we're gonna let that go. The smells from the compound butter, they really are nice. And the nice nuttiness of the pine nuts as well is a fantastic smell. So the ravioli are starting to come along. We're almost there. So we're just gonna let that turn so it doesn't burn. Like I said, everything moves rather quickly. They're starting to float up. I wouldn't even bother straining these. These ravioli are delicate. You don't wanna aggravate them or agitate them too much. 
by putting them in a strainer. I think that the best thing you can do is just pull them right out. Don't be afraid to grab a little bit of the pasta water. That extra starch is nice. Grab them, put them in. All really good noises that we like hearing. Throw that in there. This one kind of broke on me, but it's fine. We don't waste food here. Turn that off. Grab a little spoonful of the pasta water. And what we're going to do is just kind of swirl it around. There it goes. Nice brown in color. And then turn off the heat. Beautiful. Now we're going to plate. Plating is pretty simple. Be gentle, these are little babies. One, two, three. That's the one that broke that we don't care that broke. Four. There we go. And six. I'm gonna grab some of those toasted pine nuts right on top. Lid a little bit of the sauce. And there you go. At this point, you can add a little Parmesan if you'd like to the party. Parmesan is welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We have the ravioli, perfect pairing, just a little Parmesan. There you go. Nice, simple ravioli and a good sauce just to kind of showcase ravioli. Again, you can put it in any kind of sauce you'd like. I just wanted to showcase a simple way to not overshadow the main dish here. Take a little bite, see how this turns out. Boss, it's delicious. It was really good, actually. Anyway, tell me what you want to do with these raviolis. How can you show your creativity when it comes to this kind of dish? How easy it can be? how many different flavors you can infuse into such a little tiny package. Whether it's braised beef, short rib, uh, I've seen corn ravioli. Show me what you can do. Leave a like, comment, tell me how it went. Then I'll see you in the next one and have a beer on me. Boss. Awesome.